This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to what's happening here in New York, world leaders are gathering here for the 63rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. Their newest member is Fernando Lugo was inaugurated last month as the president of Paraguay. Fernando Lugo is a former priest, well-versed in liberation theology. He was called the Bishop of the Poor and is known for leading anti-government protests and fighting for peasant rights. After resigning his, his position as bishop in late 2006, he campaigned and won the election on a platform of land reform and fighting corruption. Lugo's victory marks a historic break for Paraguay. He's the first president in 66 years, not from the conservative Colorado party. Well, Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez and I had a chance to sit down with President Lugo on Sunday at the hotel where he was staying. This is his first broadcast interview in the United States. President Lugo, welcome to Democracy Now! President Lugo, bienvenido a Democracy Now! And welcome to the United States. You are the newest president in the world. What is your message to the world community at the United Nations that you bring? Thank you very much for this invitation. I think that Paraguay is, be, is experiencing a rebirth, becoming a new republic with a new vision of the world. Paraguay is changing because Paraguayan citizens in the majority of Paraguayan citizens on April 20th decided to change the political direction of the history of our country. And I'd like to tell the international community that Paraguay is integrating fully into the world community. We want an integrated community without exclusions, and also our national community is recovering its dignity. We felt ashamed to hear that Paraguay was one of the most corrupt countries of the world. Today in Paraguay, we are going to show clear signs that Paraguay will be and is one of the most uh, transparent uh, countries in terms of its public administration. You have many challenges, obviously, in the country. About 77 percent of the arable land is controlled by 1 percent of the population. What, what are you going to be doing in terms of land reform uh, to be able, to, especially when you do not have a majority in the, in the national legislature? Paraguayan society and the different sectors of Paraguayan society have reached a certain level of maturity. The time has come for us Paraguayans to sit down around the table and define our present and our future. As regards land reform, we've had an initial meeting with landless and peasant farmers, state institutions, technical experts, and landowners. We have sat down to dialogue without many differences. We are not frightened by differences or dissent. I think that as long as there is a will to sit down and talk with using the tool of dialogue and work out consensuses, then it's possible for us, ourselves, to design an integrated land reform that would benefit the majority of landless peasant farmers you one finds in Paraguay. As the bishop of the poor. Do you plan to be the president of the poor? El presidente de todos los Paraguayans. The president of all Paraguayans, first of all, without any exclusions. But if one must have preferences, it will be the indigenous and the poorest people of the country who have always been excluded from all all of the national programs and projects. Uh, short, shortly after you came into office, there were some reports of an alleged uh, coup or, or attempt to overthrow you by uh, some key leaders in government and in the military. What has happened with that, uh, uh, with those allegations, and do you fear any further attempts uh, against you? I think that at this time it's not going to occur to anyone in any country of Latin America to carry out a coup d'etat, particularly with military participation. The experience of 
UNASUR, which is a new experience, an experience of solidarity among countries that are in the southern part of the hemisphere, who are able to react expeditiously in response to such events in the region, will be fundamental. I think that in Paraguay, the political class in Paraguay was accustomed to engaging in conspiracy on a nonstop basis, and those who held power for over 60 years have a hard time today understanding that they're no longer in power after they've lost this privilege. And so I think there will be some efforts but to uh, recover the institutional framework and at the same time strengthen democracy in the country is the major objective of our government today. Speaking of attempted coups, President Lugo, one of your first acts after you became president was going to Chile along with the presidents throughout Latin America to deal with what is happening in Bolivia. What is happening? What do you think has to happen? And what about the role of the United States in Latin America? I think that the United States is aware of its role not only for Latin America but internationally. It continues to be a very important country, a very powerful country economically and politically. It has showed signs of democracy with its uh, failings, with its lights and its shadows. And I think that the countries of Latin America today have also uh, become more mature so as to be able in one way or another to say we are free after 200 years of autonomy and political political independence. Today, we can say that we are recovering the value of sovereignty, the value of independence. And I think that the role of the United States is a role of equitable, fair relations, of uh, de treating when, uh, dealing with the small and large countries of the hemisphere and of the world as equals. You confront not only, obviously, the huge nation of the United States, but you have a very big nation as your neighbor, Brazil. And there have been some conflicts in the past between Paraguay and Brazil, specifically around the issue of hydroelectric energy and treaties between Paraguay and Brazil that you consider uh, unequal. Uh, what has been, uh, what do you plan to do in that area, and do you think you'll be able to reach an accord with President Lula and the Brazilian government? Our interest is not in confronting any country, small or large. Our interest and our task is simply to relate with all countries, small and large, but as equals. Just as one week ago, we spoke with Lula, President Lula and his uh, staff of technical uh, experts and diplomats, and we sat down at the table as equals, and we put all the difficulties and problems and questions on the table relating to the Itaipu hydroelectric dam, and we'll do likewise with any other small or large country from any part of the world if such differences exist that we take note of. We're tied to Brazil by historical relations. We think that Latin America, and particularly Paraguay, is recovering its dignity as a nation. It has the capacity to relate as an equal and to solve by diplomatic means using the tool of frank, open, and sincere dialogue all the differences that we might have with any country in the world. President Lugo, when we interviewed President uh, Morales soon after you were elected, we asked him what you had, he had to say to you. He said, welcome to the axis of evil. Actually, he said, welcome to the axis of humanity. Your response? I think that there are expressions such as axis of evil, which are not all that felicitous today when it comes to sister nations characterizing themselves. I think that we need to look at the present and the future with hope and optimism, because most of the citizens who live in our countries, the indigenous peoples, the poorest of the poor, the peasant farmers, don't talk about a confrontation, but rather about constructing a much more egalitarian, uh, equitable, dignified, and humanitarian world. So yes, welcome to all of the countries of the world, and that is why we've come to the United Nations, because we want to build together for the planet that we deserve, that all us human beings deserve at this time. And in mentioning uh, controversial uh, themes, uh, liberation the 